Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor, Stephanie Georgia. Thanks to all of you who are long-term subscribers, who like and share and comment on these videos, and welcome to all new subscribers. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you know that we've been exploring botanical medicines that are helpful to the metal element in traditional Chinese medicine. And the season of autumn, which is we're well into that at this point in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, this element dominates the lung and large intestine, and it's the time of year if you want to be really healthy, if you pay attention to this system and make sure that it's working as efficiently and uh, harmoniously as possible. So for this week's Herb of the Week, we will be exploring a gift from Northern America, Northwest America, and it's called Cascara Sagrada, which means holy or sacred bark. Now, Cascara Sagrada is a species of plant in the family Ramanaceae, and it's native to North America. Now, the Latin binomial is, uh, to me, quite interesting. There's several, if you look it up, you can either find Frangula persiana, persiana or Ramnus persianus. That's an older term. <clears throat> I think the taxonomy people um, work side jobs with um, grocery stores and they're all, you know how you go into a grocery store and you know where something is and then they move it, which makes you run through the entire store searching for that. Well, I think the taxonomy people thought of that and they do that also with uh, Latin binomials. <laughs> so sometimes it uh, helps to know all of the Latin binomials if you're looking up scientific information, uh, because the older information will have different Latin binomials <clears throat> than the current Google search will uh, produce for you. Now, the dried bark of cascara was used as a laxative um, by the indigenous people of the Pacific Northwest. And it was so successful as a laxative that the uh, European colonists adopted this plant. Apparently, uh, constipation was an issue back then. What can I say? And it caught on, uh, was very, very popular, and actually was part of the uh, American pharmacopoeia until 2002. <clears throat> and this is when they took it out of the pharmacopoeia. Apparently, they did this because there wasn't enough evidence that it actually worked, which I find amusing. Uh, but they have all kinds of cautions and contraindications uh, for the use of cascara, but apparently it just doesn't work. So it doesn't, it's not official in the pharmacopoeia, but you can, and, and the FDA took away its F approval, but it's very widely available as a dietary supplement. So no worries there. It's a large shrub. And it can also look like a small tree, which can grow quite tall, uh, up to almost 40 feet tall, 12 meters tall. And it has a trunk that is anywhere from 8 to 20 inches in diameter. And the buds have no scales, which is unique uh, in the Northwest west region. Now, the bark is the medicinal part. And it's a brownish to silver gray, and it has little splotches, which can also grow things like lichens on it. Um, and the inner bark is smooth and yellowish. Uh, and this is uh, has all kinds of constituents in it that stimulate the colon. 
but not officially, apparently. Now, the habitat of this <clears throat> wonderful map, <clears throat> you can see it's all over the place. It grows in Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and uh, coastal British Columbia. And it's in very uh, high demand and there has been over harvesting from wild trees and the United Plant Savers has it on its list. So just know that I personally think it's a beautiful plant. Um, you know, I love the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's so lush and green up there. But you need to be careful if you're wild harvesting this. So just be careful. Now, the medicinal actions of cascara, there are actual se several, but the big one is the laxative. Okay. Um, it's, it's a very, very effective laxative. I'm not sure how the natives discovered this, but, you know, there you go. Another... Uh, quality to it. It's called a stomachic, which means it tonifies the stomach. It's considered tonic. And it's also very bitter. And any anything that's bitter from radicchio to cascara will definitely stimulate movement of the intestines. Now, the uh, bark uh, extract of cascara consists of lots of constituents, just like any living, living, um, sub, any living entity will have lots of constituents in it. And the big percentage is the cascara glycosides. Um, it also has something in it called an an anthracenes, something which I think is interesting, an emodin. Uh, which is a name of a, a medicine that stops um, excessive bowel movements. Um, but the biggie that you see in front of you is an anthraquinone glycoside. And this is not specific to cascara. It's shared with most plants that are laxative. But the biggie is the anthraquinone glycoside. And it has the word cascara in it. So everybody knows that that's what it is. Now, there are lots of cautions. And this is the part that I find so interesting that it's not officially recognized because it doesn't really work. But there's all kinds of cautions involved. And I support these cautions. Um, it really should not be taken for over two weeks. And honestly, in personal and clinical experience, I find that one or two doses does the trick. Um, so this is a good herb to take with you if you're traveling. Sometimes traveling, you're not eating, you know, normally and you're not drinking enough fluids. And the, the combo of those two things can put your colon to sleep. So this is a good thing to have with you when you travel. But you, if you're constipated for over two weeks and you're taking everything known to humanity and it's not helping, there's something wrong. You really need to see a healthcare practitioner. Because of its stimulating uh, activities, do not take this if you're pregnant, if you're trying to get pregnant, or if you're breastfeeding, because those uh, anthraquinone glycosides will go through the breast milk and you don't want that for your infant, really, you don't. Now, if you have things like Crohn's disease, kidney disease, colitis, this is not something that you should take, definitely. And overuse, um, even uh, simple use, like let's say you, you drink one cup of tea, you might get a lot of cramping with this. It's very effective, even though it's not official. And you should also not take uh, cascara if you are on uh, heart medicine, digoxin, steroids, diuretics, or blood thinners. Okay. So it also... Um, has the potential to be abused, especially for people with eating disorders. 
uh, particularly things like bulimia uh, and anorexia. People overtake this in order to, you know, make their weight. And if you take it too much, it actually strips the body of vital electrolytes and can cause muscle uh, cramps and even heart problems. So this really is not an herb that you should take on a regular basis. If you're constipated all the time, you really need to look at your diet, your exercise, your fluid intake, um, your emotional situation. You may be uh, really stressed out and that may be affecting your bowels, different things like that. So um, this really is kind of a, a last resort, one or two day type of herb, but it really, really is quite effective. Now, there are all kinds of supplements on the market. You can take it in pill form. Sometimes uh, herbal laxatives, this will be part of that or a leading part of it. You can get it, uh, the, the bulk herb in uh, dried bark. You can use that in tea. It also comes in tincture form. And if you find uh, herbal teas with these really fun titles uh, that make, make your bowels move, um, it's usually in there. Um, so it's, it's widely available. It's, it's actually widely available and uh, just know that it's really not good tasting. To me, it tastes like bile. Um, and sometimes in these herbal teas, they'll mix it up with all sorts of different things to make it taste better. So it's up to you what you would like to do and how you would like to take it. Now, you can grow mascara <laughs> if you like. Um, obviously you have to sacrifice the plant because it's the bark, but it's a wonderful, uh, addition to a garden. And if you have a lot of property in the Pacific Northwest and you want to help the ecosystem, you can start growing it specifically so that it doesn't get wild crafted to extinction. Um, and a lot of Pacific Northwest nurseries have this available. As I said, it's quite beautiful. Uh, to me, it looks like all sorts of different plants, but it, it's very pretty, I think. And just know you can look this up on United Plant Savers because it's on alert for uh, endangerment. So... However you wish to temporarily use this in your uh, health regimen, or if you want to beautify your garden, I hope you can explore this amazing gift from the North American uh, Pacific West Northwest and uh, really be amazed as I am as to all the different ways that nature offers healing to us humans. This is Stephanie Georgiev saying thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. Make sure to check out the links in the program notes. And until next time, be well.